You spoke about non-Muslims choosing to go to the fire of hell. Is it not true that God knows about everything from beforehand and why can they be blamed for choosing? Isn't it Allah who, who chose for them that they will burn in the fire of hell? And how can that be justice? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. We've had some actually some very good questions today. Um, did everyone hear the question and understand it? Raise your hand if you didn't hear the question or understand it. Okay, so I will repeat it. The question was, I said that human beings can willingly choose to go to hellfire by disobeying God and doing these things. But doesn't Allah the Creator already know who will and will not go to heaven or hell? And hasn't that already been ordained? Therefore, how is it that we're making that choice when that choice has already been made for us? It's a very good question. And it's an issue that within the religion of Islam, many deviated groups have broken off the mainstream Islam based upon this issue of predestination. Predestination or Qadr wal Qadr. Predestination. Now let me explain something to all of you. And this is something that many Muslims miscomprehend. And I'm not going to get too deep in it because I will confuse you and probably me and everybody else. You have Sheikh Haytham here and uh, other uh, resident uh, scholars who are going to come on here that will answer these questions for you. Uh, beautifully but I will sum it up for you in a way that you might be able to take it home you see we as human beings don't really concept or comprehend some things about God because of our limitation of our minds and our faculties we look at the world through the prism of our eyes this is how we see the world through the faculty of our senses our eyes our ears we need them can you see without your eyes no if I break your eardrums, can you hear? If I cut off your hands, can you touch? No. You see, we don't look at God like this. We look at Allah is that He sees without the need of eyes. He hears without the faculty of needing something to hear. He looks at everything in a way that we can't comprehend. He sees the past, the present, and the future all very easily. For us, we have to see the world through the prism of time. Has anyone had the capacity to watch a movie and see the beginning and the end at the same time? And all this in the middle, at the same time. Can you do it? No, you have to watch it from beginning to end as it progresses. God does not see the world like this. He doesn't see His creation like this. He sees all of it comprehensively. And He has the most intimate knowledge about things. The Creator knows everything that has happened. Everything that has ever happened at any place within existence. He knows it perfectly since time itself was incepted. He also knows everything that is presently happening everywhere. Perfectly within His existence and creation. Everything. He knows it perfectly, intimately. Even what you're thinking right now, even what you're feeling. He knows it. He knows everything that will happen at every time, every place until there is no such thing called time anymore. That means forever and ever and ever, infinity. He also knows what will not happen. But if it were to happen, He knows how it would happen. Meaning if you were given three choices in life, not only does Allah know which one you will choose, but He also knows which ones you will not choose. But if you chose them, how everything would be different. That's what's called ultimate knowledge, that we as human beings can't comprehend. Therefore, yes, Allah has already written in His book whether I will go to heaven or hell. He wrote that in His book before anything existed. That I will be a Muslim and I will go to heaven or hell. That's it. I know that. It's a part of my religion. But He did not make that choice for me. He already knew what I was going to do. He knew every choice that I would be given in life and how I would make that choice and how that choice would determine my life and how I ended it. That's ultimate knowledge ultimate knowledge. It doesn't take away my free will. It's just the fact that Allah already knew everything that I would be doing. The first thing ever created was a pen. And that pen was commanded only to do one thing. First, it was only given one word. Uktub. Write. That's it. It was told, write. And what did that pen say? Write what? What do you want me to write? Allah created a pen that can talk. Yes, it did. Allah said, write everything that will ever happen from this point on. 
And then the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said something when he made his ascension into the heavens, the Isra wal Miraj. The pen has been lifted and the ink is dry. In that book that was writing from the beginning of time, he said, the pen has been lifted and the ink is dry. Meaning, it's what is commanded to be done will be done. Somewhere in that book, Allah commanded that pen to write, Yusha, Joshua, Evans will become a Muslim. Somewhere in that book, the creator of all that exists saw something in, within the creation of me that he valued to the point where he decided that I would be guided to the right path. Just thinking about that really overwhelms me. Because that was before anything ever existed. That means he valued you enough. The Creator favored you enough to place you either as a Muslim or in this gathering. What are you doing with your life to repay him? That's something I didn't ask for and I didn't do anything to deserve because I had not been created yet. But for some reason, the Creator said, you will be a Muslim. I can't do anything to give that back. I can't repay that. If you gave me a hundred lifetimes, Upon guidance, I would not even come close to scratching the surface of being able to repay that debt to my Creator. So what do I do? I try every day to do as much as I can. But it will never be enough. It will never be enough. When I stand in front of my Creator on the Day of Judgment, I will have nothing. Even if I never committed one sin in my life, I wouldn't have anything that I could show to my Creator and say, here you go, I deserve paradise. You tell me what I've done that's valuable enough for eternal paradise. Nothing. Nothing. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said this himself. He said, let none of you think that by doing good, you're going to go to paradise. Don't let your good make you arrogant in thinking that you deserve anything from Allah. Because if you try to repay Allah for your eyesight, you couldn't. If you tried to repay Him for your air that you breathe, you couldn't. If you tried to repay Him for the heart He gave you, you couldn't. What are you going to do to repay that? What about the guidance that He gave you to the right path? You can't, you just try to the best of your ability. Not even you, O Messenger of Allah. Even your good's not gonna take you to paradise, it's not even me. Not even my good will take me to paradise, unless what? Unless God, the Creator, Allah, is merciful to me. Why? What if He committed no sin? Mercy of the Creator is just the fact that I can breathe. The mercy of the Creator is the fact that my heart beats, that my eyes see, that my brain works, that I'm alive today is the mercy of the Creator. So unless He has true mercy upon us and forgives us for what we cannot do to make up what He has given us, none of us will ever make it. Think about that today, that that name, your name was in that book for a reason. Try to do everything you can to repay your Creator for it, because if not, you're a loser. And this was very clearly stated by the first two human beings that ever existed. They said, our Lord, we have wronged our own soul. If you don't forgive us and have mercy on us, then indeed we will be a loser. This is the reality. This is the point. This is the whole purpose. Allah created you to show who He was. And I want to give you a little small snippet since I got eight minutes. You have any other questions? Okay. I will end then with my last statement to make it all fit together in a nice little package.